Hi, this is Abhik Bhattacharya from Outlook Magazine. Today, we are at Rachi constituency in Jharkhand. Uh, Rachi has been a constituency uh, that has so many different importance uh, uh, for Indian politics. Number one, uh, Rachi is the space where we have seen uh, so many times the central leaderships coming and trying to woo the voters. Number two, Rachi is a space that is Adivasi dominated, a major constituency that BJP is banking on. So whenever we talk about Jharkhand, whenever we talk about Rachi, we have hardly seen a woman candidate in this city. Today, Opposition Alliance and uh, mostly Congress has nominated Yashashwini Sahai as the candidate of Rachi Lok Sabha seat. Today we are with Yashashwini ji and we will try to understand how as a woman candidate she is navigating through her journey. Thank you Yashashwini for joining us. Thank you so much. Uh, so Yashashwini, let's start with this thing that uh, as a woman, you're the first woman candidate Rachi yes. ever had. Yes. So what is your journey? How this thing is, what is your experience on the ground? Yeah. How are you looking into it, if you can share with us? So because I'm the first female candidate from here, I think predominantly women voters in Ranchi, if you talk about my constituency, we're half the population. Hmm. So predominantly women voters have been feeling like they were left out hmm. because Whenever even like interactions with any kind of political leaders, women were never on the forefront of it. Yeah, yeah. So now that I've been able to come onto, you know, this political forum in a way, yeah. and my previous experience has been working for women rights and child yeah. rights. Yeah. I think I've been able to build a stronger bond. Yeah. I'm seeing a word bond because it's a bond. It's not even political at yeah. this front. So it's a bond where I'm trying to, you know, like, understand their problems and understand what can be the best solutions for women voters here because here over here women are very liberated mm. if you look at adivasi women they're very liberated they're working they're earning income mm. so we've got different sections of societies we've got adivasi women we've got we've got the city voters mm. because ranchi in itself even as a constituency has rural and urban mm. so mm. we've got your urban women who are as it is very independent and liberated. We've got Adivasi women who are working. Yeah. Then we've got different sections of society, you know, the SCST, OBC. Yeah. They all have separate, I would say, separate problems. Yeah. But as women, they all feel left out. Yeah. So yeah. now that I have been able to give some sort of representation, mm -hmm. I can see that, you know, women uh, power, if you see even Kalpana Sorin Ma'am is here yeah. now, yeah. a lot of female power is sort of uprising in Jharkhand. So this is something, as you just referred to Kalpana Soren, and I just uh, uh, was wondering that, is it the, is the first time in Jharkhand that we can see so many women leaders coming up and taking up the political uh, true, scenario? True, like? true. And like I said, there was no representation before, but mm. now you look at Kalpana Soren, ma'am, she's a working, she was a working woman. Mm, yeah. So now that she's here, it's great because we need women to be able to sort of represent the voices that are not getting represented, mm -hmm. that were totally left. Mm -hmm. Women were essentially earlier were just depending on, okay, you know, my family is voting for this person. Mm -hmm. I'll go forward with it. But I meet a lot of women voters who are now like, no, we want to have our own identity, political mm -hmm. identity mm -hmm. as to who we vote. So we've been able to sort of get a connection in that sense. And Kalpana Sorin Ma'am has been getting, you can see so much love now over here. I think it's great that we can see women power coming forward. Great. Uh, so another uh, point that uh, I was thinking through, uh, youth. Another uh, major part is the youth unemployment that Congress and the Opposition Alliance have been continuously saying that this is one of the major problems of the country. Yeah. So as a youth, what's your plan actually? If you get elected on 4th June, it's yeah. in your favor, then what's, what's your plan? So like you spoke about unemployment, the biggest problem with unemployment is you need to have systemic system level interventions. It starts at educational level. There are a lot of children here who get get to go to school, but drop mm. out. The mm. dropout rates are very high. Mm. Absolutely. How are we going to tackle that? Yeah. The problem with the youth in Jharkhand or in Ranchi, we need to make them employable. Mm. Because even if you go and get a degree, you go to a college, mm. you're not employable. So you don't get employable employment mm. opportunities. Mm. Mm. That's why 
how can you make them employable mm. at the same time how do you create jobs for them mm. because we need to i mean this is an industrial it it's considered it's a, an yeah. industrial hub <laughs> but we need to get more people in jharkhand mm. who can give us employable uh, employment opportunities like msmes we need mm. you know like small scale industries i mean mm. those are dying right now mm. Mm. so how do you do that and the the bigger problem i would say is because there's a huge uh disparity between the young people over here and the young people who are coming to work from outside mm-hmm. and the people who are very employable over here will migrate like you see a lot of young people mm-hmm. from jharkhand mm-hmm. going to delhi bombay yes yes bangalore mm-hmm. because they don't have work opportunities here mm-hmm. and the work opportunities here are mostly mazduri kar rahe hain wo log mm-hmm. so they are working daily wages so how do you make them how do you give them those uh platforms where they you have to level the playing field essentially so they can get you know degrees that are not only uh you know not just a basic graduation but upskill those degrees mm. so those are the things i want to work on like even like getting community centers you know like encouraging the sports amongst youth because sports in jharkhand is in the, massive i'll just i'll just intervene here as you as you have pointed out something very interesting that is a migrant workers Jharkhand during COVID period, we got to know that how many migrant workers are there, and they are exactly. coming back to. They have been taken exactly. back by him and so on. So, uh, even today, as there are few reports that we were going through that says that now even migrant workers are unable to come to vote. Yeah. So that's another issue. So twenty fifth May voting is there. Yes. In Ranchi. Yes. So what's your plan? Are you somewhere or other connecting to the migrant workers? Are your workers are connecting to them to asking them to coming back? Like absolutely, because mm. like when we talk about migrant workers, mm. like I said, my constituency has all sections of society. Mm. We've got it's like. it's somewhat of a democracy mm. in a way we've mm. got everybody in it mm. we've got people who are working in multinational mm. companies mm. we've got people who are doing daily wage mm. migrant workers mm. like you mentioned mm. the thing mm. with migrant workers is their biggest problem is that they are not getting enough um how do you say this they're not being paid enough mm. Mm. over here in jharkhand that's why they're going out mm. we have to combat this at a larger level at a state level so that we can bring them you know here or we can keep them here with giving them work you spoke of elections see now with elections the thing is there's a lot of people who will be outside there are out, mm. they are outside mm. i have been connecting with them mm. but their biggest concern is how can we stay here how can we get opportunities here so we can stay with our families and make money and take care of our home for the last few months we have been consistently seeing one party or the other trying to communalize yeah. the situation of charkhand yeah and recently Pr- prime minister narendra modi even assam chief minister hemant biswa sharma have said few things that has the potential to vitiate the communal environment how or how are you going to combat that because if the votes are polarized then this issues don't come up what you are talking about you know exactly that's the thing and my whole election campaign has been built on the fact that we must vote for the things that matter to us the government's job is to give our children schools is to give us good health to give us roads to give us electricity to give us water these are the concerns and a lot of people agree with us because see what happens is you can go and you can you can get communalized but if you don't have your next meal on your table you may think and you may want to talk about religion but it's not going to matter if you cannot feed your family so the matter is very grave in jharkhand especially because people don't have jobs mm-hmm. that is a bigger concern and i don't even need to go and talk to people about these things they are coming to us and saying we need to feed our family we need food on the table so that should be the bigger concern and a lot of people are joining with us are creating momentum on these bases so i think this is a world i mean it's a country wide issue you know like the whole communal polarization that's been happening and a lot of people who sort of benefit out of this it's just you benefit out of some sort of a religious tactic or whatever polarization on whatever basis it may be caste it may be religion it may be culture language but i think people understand that if we're not being able to grow and progress we may talk about these things on the top of our lungs 
what is the matter of this? What is the point of all of this? If I cannot take care of my child and send my child to school, if I cannot bring back money and take care of my family. So I think we must really come down to the basics, which is how does every child over here get schooling? How do <coughs> women feel safer here? How do the young people get jobs here? And I think Jharkhand is going to show an incredible result in the elections this time in that sense. I believe that because the people here are incredibly sharp, incredibly, I would say, uh, they're also very vibrant. They've just not been able to get that platform. And I feel like Jharkhand has been overlooked, you know, as a state. Most. Yes. So the people, the culture, I think they're, we are very unifying. And we do believe in, you know, unity in diversity. And I've seen that. You go to the villages here, you'll see people from different sections of society. You'll see people from different religions. They're all hanging out together. Yeah. There is no hatred amongst them. So the hatred that's trying to be created is coming from the people who are trying to sort of spit this whenever.